What is up, guys? This is Ride the Pine. I'm back at it again with Brady Ralstead. Today we're going to go over our top six wide receivers going into 2020 based on everything. Um, talent, who they got surrounding them, the overall team chemistry, everything. Let's jump right into it. Starting with number six, Mike Evans for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Played 13 out of 16 games last year, 67 receptions. 1,157 yards, averaging 17.3 yards per catch. How do you feel about this, Brady? Uh, you know, based on those last year's, last year's stats, having Jameis Winston, uh, you know, Jameis isn't a great quarterback, and the fact that he's going to put up some decent numbers last year, I feel that now with having Tom Brady and a few other weapons that the defense has to worry about, um, Mike Evans is a serious threat to, to be had out there, and being the fact that he's, a, he's kind of made himself a predominant name, though, it's – He's put himself out there, and he's going to have a, quite a big opportunity this year to prove himself again. Yes, for sure. Brady has also been a great quarterback that has used the deep weapons that he's been given throughout the years, such as Gronk, Randy Moss, um, yes, yes. and there's many, many more. All sure. right, now moving into number five, Devontae Adams for the Green Bay Packers. Played 12 out of 18 games, um, was injured with turf toe for a good portion of the season. Um, had 83 receptions, 997 yards, averaging 12 yards per catch. Um, you know, obviously a great wide receiver. Why do you feel like he's in the top six, Brady? He's the top six because he is that deep threat guy. You know, it's uh, last year playing only 12 games and having, you know, when he was in, he had a quite an impact when he was in there. You could tell when you, the, the, just cause we're, if we're talking just in general how good the receiver is and how good they're going to be this year. The Packers don't didn't have much around him last year, so the fact that it was all on Devontae put him in that spotlight, and he came through quite a bit. He's a deep threat with Aaron Rodgers. You never know what's going to happen back there. So, you know, yes, it's, it's, for sure, he's a good, he's a good he's a good player. Yes, definitely. Sure. We both think he's in that top five conversation at least. Now moving into number four, the speedy guy Tyree Hill played. 12 out of 19 games last season, 58 receptions, 860 yards, averaging 14.8 yards per catch. Um, obviously, Tyreek Hill is not going to be a guy that's going to get all the catches in the world, but his impact on the game is tremendous. He stretches the defense um, very, very wide, especially downfield mm -hmm. because of how fast he is. He's the fastest player on the field every time he touches the field. And, uh, yeah, how do you feel about it? You know, it's just like you said, he's the fastest player on the field, and, you know, he doesn't get all the touches. But when he's on the field, he's always a threat. And so as, as a defense, thinking at it through a defensive player's mind, it's he's always a threat. So, you know, whether or not he gets every touch, he's always – you always have to worry about him. So, you know, he does get those touches, and he makes big plays out of them with the 14 yards per catch. But it's the plays when he's not getting the ball that's scary too because he's blown past your guys, and you're, uh-oh, Tyreek's gone again when are they going to come back to him? That's the scary part about Tyreek. Yeah, for sure. And especially when you have Mahomes who can deliver the ball, um, Tyreek Hill makes his teammates better because he draws so oh, much yeah. attention. All right, now moving into number three, the crybaby, Michael Thomas. Um, plays for the New Orleans Saints. Played 16 out of 18 games last season, 149 receptions, leading the league. Um, 17 or excuse me, 1,725 yards, averaging 11.6 per game. Obviously a great wide receiver. Um, he's definitely in a system offense that empowers him with Sean Payton as a coach and the Hall of Famer Drew Brees at QB, um, especially surrounding himself with talent all across the board. But um, you got the catching back in uh, Alvin Kamara. You have Taysom Hill, who does a little bit of everything. Um, Jared Cook great tight end I've always liked him yeah um yeah why do you feel well the, the you know, everyone everyone gives Michael Thomas that top spot immediately off just because of the numbers he puts up but just like you said it's a systematic offense Teddy Bridgewater came in and I don't want to say annihilated but he played very well and that's no rip on Drew Brees because you know Drew is still a great quarterback and he has been his entire career Yes. But it's a system offense, so when your entire offense, I don't say it revolves around Mike Thomas, but just revolves around getting him the ball quite a bit with 149 touches, that wasn't by accident. By no, no means was that, oh, man, Michael Thomas is just this crazy good that we need to give him 149 touches. It was quick, short game passes that 
all added up eventually to 149 uh, receptions. So yeah, uh, no, know, yes, I he's, a good, he's a good you. receiver. He's, he is the top five receiver, no question about it. But he's not number one because of the fact that he's in such a system offense, and he, I don't say has to prove himself, but he's just not the guy if you would compare to other guys in the league. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree with you. Um, and he probably has on this list of wide receivers, he probably has if not the best QB, one of the yes. best. For sure. Um, now moving on to number two, the big man, Julio Jones for the Atlanta Falcons. Played 15 out of 16 games last year, 99 receptions, um, 1,394 yards, averaging 14.1. Obviously a great wide receiver has been in this conversation for the past um, five years. Um, definitely produces at a high level. Only right. reason why he's not my number one is his inconsistency. He might be a guy that yeah. goes off for um, 10 catches for 150 yards, which is great, but mm -hmm. he might have the occasional, occasional three catches for, um, you know, 40 yards yeah, or That's... even less than that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can tell that when you play fantasy, you know, you start him in some weeks, you're getting 30 points out of him. Some weeks, you're getting two. You know, it's just like you said, it's the one part about him that doesn't make him number one is the inconsistency. And, you know, uh, it's not a major, you know, it's it's not like Amari Cooper where he's just gone half the year. It's a few <laughs> games here and there. <laughs> but, you know, Julio has proven himself to be a major deep threat. And, you know, it's just amazing to see how long he's been at the top of his game like this where he has he has a threat to go deep every play. Yes, for sure. Um, and what's even making this more remarkable is Julio Jones on this list now probably has the worst quarterback out of all of them. Um, Mike Evans did have Winston, so obviously yep. Winston was the worst, but now he has Tom Brady. But yep. now looking out at all of these, I feel that Matt Ryan is the worst quarterback. Unfortunately, you know, it's Chris crazy to think that Matt Ryan is the worst quarterback on this list we have right now, but looking at who else is out there. I mean, well, I no, I actually meant the no, he is better than Kyler Murray. I give Matt Ryan better than Kyler Murray at the moment. At this very at moment. At this moment. At this moment throughout their career. So I that, agree with you. Now this that very much could change in the first few weeks of the season, but I'm yeah. I'm not willing to jump on the board of Matt Ryan's the worst quarterback on the top six list here that we have okay. going. But for sure. But but you know, either way, he is he is not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Aaron Rodgers. He's not Tom Brady. He's he's a few wins away from being those guys, but he's not them, unfortunately. Yes, for sure. Now moving into our number one, Nuke, DeAndre Hopkins. Um, played 15 out of 17 games last season, mm -hmm. 104 receptions, 1,165 yards, averaging 11.2 per catch. Obviously yep. a great wide receiver, just like Julio has been in yep. this conversation the last five years um, has had a decent quarterback throughout the years in uh, Deshaun Watson. Yep. Um, but now that he has moved on to the Arizona Cardinals with having the QB Kyler Murray, um, I'm a big supporter, but um, like you said, he's not the greatest out of all of these uh, no. other QBs no. or these wide receivers. But how do you no. feel about this? So the thing is about the way DeAndre has played, the way I've seen it is he's always, I don't want to say surrounded by good talent, but he's always had secondary guys around him. You look at, yeah. you know, what well, last year had Will Fuller around him and, you know, that, that helps draw some attention away where you're not the only target. You know, you, you look at some of these guys and they're the only target out there. You know, Devonta Adams is the only guy out there for Aaron Rodgers to throw to. But yeah. you look at DeAndre, he's had success when there's other guys around him that's helped him out. And another thing that DeAndre does very well is, he he's a safety valve. You know, when Desha Deshaun Watson would roll out and get in bad situations, I remember when they played the Patriots and they're driving down the field and Deshaun Watson gets himself running around, about to get sacked, and somehow magically finds Deshaun or finds uh, Nuke in the end zone. I couldn't believe it. It just it's a safety valve he's built with his quarterback. So I think being Kyler Murray is very similar to Deshaun Watson. I think he's gonna have the same sort of success. The fact that yeah. he's gonna be he's gonna be Kyler's safety valve where you know, it's, it's a scramble drill. He's going to be able to find DeAndre. And what I think is also good for him is having having Larry out there and having Christian Kirk out there is going to be big because those guys, oh, they're not 
all stars at this point, or Kirk, Kirk could be right on the edge, but they're not all pros at this point anymore. Uh, there's still some bigger. There's still they still have an impact. You know. Those, yeah, they definitely Kirk have that, to go uh, off at any point, so they have they can take the stress off DeAndre for sure. Yeah, for sure. They uh, demand the respect of the defense, especially the yes, defense. That, that's that's a better way of phrasing it. Yeah. Um, and then you even look at um, Houston. Um, mm-hmm. You know, he like you stated, they have had good talent at the wide receiver. Um, yeah. Guys that are big, fast, quick. You had Kiki Cootie before, Kenny Stills, yep. Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller. All these guys are um, players that can make big plays, and that helps as a wide receiver. Um, that oh, is why Adams is not on – the top three list because, you know, he's doing it by himself and that's hard to do consistently. Um, yeah. You know, you might not as get as many catches. Your stats might not look as good, but if you're getting double and triple teamed every yep. game, um, it's going to be a little bit harder for you. And then you look at yeah. somebody like Nuke, um, who has talent all across the board with a good QB, um, makes the job a little bit easier. Yeah, for sure. That is all we got for you guys today. Um, This is our top six wide receivers going into 2020. Hope you guys enjoyed and have a great day.